Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another exploration. And I'm here in, are we West Sussex or East Sussex? West Sussex. We're still in West Sussex. I'm joined today um, by Richard Putnam. Hello, Richard. Hello. You're the church warden. Yep. Is that correct? Absolutely. The, in the uh, parish church of St. Giles, which uh, fortunately, so it's just over there, so I was able to read it in the Diocese of Chichester. Thank you so much, Richard, for agreeing to take us around what is a very interesting church in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely. It sits in a private estate and has been here since Saxon times. There's a church described in the Doomsday Book of 1086, which is St Giles. It is St Giles. And it's described in there as a, an ecclesiola, a little church. Wow. Uh, this building here dates back to the 1100s. Uh, the middle walls are, are medieval, I go back to 1100, and over the years, particularly in the 1700s, 1710 and 1747, it was extended both east and west. Gosh. And uh, it's got a Horsham stone roof, which we uh, took off uh, uh, 10 years ago and uh, relayed at great expense, but the church is now watertight. And uh, it's a fascinating place and people still come here for services. We have services on the first and the third Sundays of each month, plus extras like Remembrance Sunday yes. two days ago, um, and Christmas, of course, and Easter and Harvest Festival and everything else. So it's still very popular. Uh, reducing population because the older generations die off. Yes, They're that's very true. hard to uh, replace. It's a low church. We enjoy ourselves. We always stop after service and have a coffee or a cup of tea and a, and a chat, <laughs> which sometimes lasts as long as the service. Oh, uh, yeah, well, there you go. Great. Could you could you just place us where we are and, and the local uh, surrounding? Absolutely. Because all around us is beautiful countryside. Yeah. Now, the church sits on a little promontory about 20 to 25 feet above the floodplain of the River Ada on the south side, which up until about 200 years ago was very tidal. Yes. And markedly so. And in the early days, back in the Saxon times, they were quite clever as to where they put their uh, settlements, but they also protected themselves. And they dug dikes, so the church was virtually surrounded by water at high tide, almost the whole way round. Gosh, like a moat, in like a, a way. Virtually a moat, uh, yeah. Uh, that, but since those days, of course, the tidal, uh, the, the, the river is not very tidal at all, although when the dry floods, the floods will not go down until the tide goes out. Oh, so you know it's tidal. We know it's yeah. tidal. Yeah. But of course the industry here was Sussex Oak. The whole of the area here was, was uh, down to Sussex Oak, which was felled, dragged down to the river, put on barges, Gosh. and taken down to Shoreham and uh, Portsmouth to build uh, ships for the Royal Navy. Yeah, wow. So that was hard work, but it had to be tidal, of course. Yes. So hence we've now and, got... And the, as we look round, there are still remnants of oaks here. Oh, lovely old oak. Now, there's an oak tree here, this big one here, which uh, has a girth of 7.5 7 metres. Gosh. Which tells us that that was planted in the reign of Elizabeth I. There you go. So that's been here some time. Yes. Let's go up and have a look at the church, shall Okay. We? I'll come round on this side of you, if I may. We've got a lovely little uh, iron gate to go through. I'll let you do the opening, if that's all right. And through a, a, a modest uh, graveyard, It is a modest graveyard. Of course, a, a huge proportion of stones have fallen down over the years. Yes. And the big uh, uh, stone over there, the big sort of uh, concrete type urn, uh, is the graveyard of a family called Ede, who were the millers who ran the flour mill based on the river just the other side of, a, uh, of the church. A water mill, we a should A water say. mill, yes. yeah. And here, of course, it was a Mr. Big. Yes. Because everybody needed his flour to make their bread. Yes. And uh, that's the family, family tomb. Gosh, so he has got basically pride of place. Absolutely. Yes. And then the steps on the outside of the church here lead up to the organ loft, um, which used to be a, a gallery for the choir. Right. Uh, but it's now houses the the modern Dutch organ, which is fine, but it's still got an outside flight of steps. And the porch here was added in about 1747. Um, but we'll go into the church now and, and have a look at that. Yes, let's do that. I see you've got um, mesh but to protect the doors. Do you get birds flying in? Well, in the summer when it gets really hot, yes. we can leave the doors open. Oh, and of course. And clo yeah. close the mesh doors. So the church here is quite interesting. It's quite small and it's got box pews, of course, which are it's probably its most famous feature. And, and all with names of the families or the names of the houses the houses so some of the houses are mentioned two or three times 
which tells you that the owners sat near the front yes. and the lower orders sat, sat near the back. Yes. And a feature on the, on the south side of the church is a little sink called a piscina, which used to sit next to the altar to wash the, uh, the cups after a mass. Because in those days, of course, it was a Catholic church. Yes, of course. And that, the archway on that piscina matches precisely the archway on this now blocked off doorway which tells us or indicates that the church was quite small. That was the entrance and the, down as far as the piscina, so it's a little box church. Yes. And that's how it remained really for about three or four hundred years. And then in 1700 or between 700 and 1710, it felt the church was in a bad condition, a bad state, no one was coming to it. The church wardens fell out with the vicar, and the, but they extended the church, they repaired it and extended it that way, which is when the chancel was, was, was first built. Right, oh, okay. And that was in the days of Queen Anne, and that's why we have a lovely painting on the wall here, the coat of arms of Queen Anne, which is quite rare because she didn't sit on the throne for very long. No, that's true. Um, and we had it cleaned about two years ago, and it's in a fine state again now. It is very resplendent, I have to say. And then in 1747, the church, the aisle was extended that way towards the west, when the porch was actually added. Um, so it's, it's built in, in, in several stages, albeit over eight or 900 years. Yes. And then back, in, back again in 1898, the roof was uh, uh, relayed, which we had to do again in 2010. And they were digging the foundations to build the uh, vestry. And they unearthed some interesting masks, which we now have on the back wall of the church which in their day were looked at by a well-known archaeologist who uh, uh, wrote them up. And the main mask is a, Bur a, Bur a Burgundian figure. They can tell that from the shape of the moustache and the curls on the side, who they reckon was the builder. Right. In the days before they signed off their paperwork and yes, they couldn't write, they used to leave their masks. And with that mask, they found a little uh, female mask here. We're not quite sure who she is. The humorists suggest it might be his wife, but I don't really think so. No. And with that was a gorbel, which obviously was used up in the roof space at some stage in the past, which matches gorbels in Chichester Cathedral, which so, is interesting. Yes. So it all comes from the same source. But of course, in the 1100s, he's Burgundian because the, the church, sorry, the country was still Norman. Yes. And they used the Norman craftsmen to make, to, to build. Yes, of so course. he came over here probably for a year, built the small church, and then went home again, and left his, leaving his his mask. Yes, absolutely. Which we found again. Which you found during the rest of well, absolutely. Yeah. Now the other interesting feature is the font, which dates back to about 1220, and that's the reign of Henry the Third, who, as you all know, reigned, reigned between 1216 and 1272, and um, it's the most interesting. And it used to sit in the middle of the aisle which they found very inconvenient for weddings and funerals <laughs> because of the low ceiling above, oh, yeah. by, the, by the door. Yes. And it was moved about 50 years ago in, its, uh, in the position there, but it's a lovely piece of work. Um, and we get people coming down from Oxford University to look at that. Do There's they? something special about it, which, which I'm not too sure about. And, it's, uh, it's just old. And you have a personal connection with the church in this place? In the sense that I was baptised here. Yes, in I'm that a, very font? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I know, yeah, that's what they tell me. Yeah. And I, I, I was married here. My father was a church warden for 21 years. So I feel it's my home, really. Yes, you know, yes. Part of the family history. A ter ter and a terrific place. And although it is out, as some people might think, in the sticks, a lot goes on here. Oh, yeah. We, I mean, we probably get between 20 and 30 to normal services, which is not bad. But to raise money, I don't do things like coffee mornings and, no. uh, and raise peanuts. I, I do big things. Uh, and we have, we've had country fairs out here, which have been attended by two or 3,000 people e wow. e every time. Yes. Let's step outside briefly. I want to thank you very much for um, taking me around this, this gem of a church. To get to the church, it's on a bridle path, is that correct? It's on a bridle path. And the gates are opened, of course, in time for services when they're when they're held. Yes. Um, and it's just off the A two eight one between uh, Henfield and uh, Calfold. Well, Richard, it's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for taking us round, and I hope that other people can get a chance to have a wander up the bridle path. Not too far, 
and stumble across this magnificent gem in the landscape. It's been a pleasure. Thank it's you very much pleasure. indeed. So there we are. Join me again next time when I go exploring. But for now, leave a comment, make a suggestion of somewhere to go and um, don't forget to subscribe. Till the next time, bye for now. Bye.